Today we will look at the famous Hill Yosida theorem. which characterizes the infinitesimal generator of a C0 semigroup. So, before I start some errata as usual. So, in yesterday's uh, in the previous lecture in the very first theorem both in the statement and the first sentence of the proof I wrote C0 semigroup. So, replace it by contraction semigroup you would have worked it out because the in fact we were talking that section itself was devoted to contraction semigroups yeah. and then in the course of the proof when trying to prove that uh, r lambda u is in d omega I had the following uh, expression integral h to infinity e power minus lambda tau minus h s tau of u d tau minus 1 over h integral 0 to infinity s tau of u d tau. Now, this there was a e power minus lambda tau which is missing. So, you please uh, add that all that and then uh, in front of the lemma I said a as above and then in a little square I wrote down various things and so I wrote that a closed densely defined and for every lambda greater than 0 lambda i minus a inverse exists and then norm of lambda i minus a inverse I wrote it as 1 that is wrong you might again you would have you known from the rest of the proof that it was actually 1 over lambda. Okay, so, these are the corrections which we wanted to do. Okay. So, now we want to, so what did we do last time? We introduced the Yoshida approximation so for lambda positive you have a lambda is equal to lambda a r lambda r lambda we call is nothing but lambda i minus a inverse ok which was given by the Laplace transform. So, it is equal to uh, lambda a lambda a r lambda which makes sense because r lambda u for any u belongs to the domain of a and therefore, this makes sense and then this is if you recall since lambda i minus a inverse is r lambda you get that this is equal to lambda square r lambda minus lambda i and therefore, this belongs to L of V. So, this is a bounded linear operator and we had uh, two lemmas and that was lambda r lambda u goes to u for all u in V and then and you have that a lambda u goes to a u for all u in d a ok and then we also saw that r lambda and r mu commute which implies that a lambda and a mu commute ok and also that e power t a lambda which is a contraction semi group and therefore, that is equal less than or equal to 1 and so this are the this is where we stood last time. So, now we have the following theorem. So, v Banach a from d a contained in v to v closed densely defined operator such that for every lambda greater than 0 lambda i minus a inverse exists as a bounded linear operator as a bounded linear operator and norm of lambda i minus a inverse is less than or equal to 1 over lambda ok. Then a is the 
infinitesimal generator of a contraction semigroup. So, this is the converse of what we have been doing up to now. Up to now, we have shown that all these properties are uh, hold for the infinitesimal generation of contraction semigroup. Now, we are saying if A is unbounded operator with all these properties, then it is also the infinitesimal generator for contraction semigroup. So, this is a converse. So, therefore, we have an infin we will have an if and only if statement at the end of this theorem. Okay. So, step 1. So, we have already seen that A lambda and A mu commute. Okay. And therefore, it follows that norm of e power t a lambda u minus e power t a mu u is equal to integral norm of, of course, 0 to 1 d by ds of e power t s a lambda e power t into 1 minus s a mu u dt. This is nothing but e power s times t a lambda plus 1 minus s times t a mu, but a lambda a mu commute and therefore e power a plus b is e power a e power b. That is the uh, uh, reason why I am using the fact that a lambda and a mu are commuting. So, therefore, that is equal to this norm. So, d by d s of this when s equal to 0, you will get a mu and when s is equal to 1, you will get a lambda and therefore, you get these two expressions. Now, you differentiate inside. So, that is equal to so that is less than or equal to take the norm also inside integral 0 to 1 t times norm e power t s a lambda e power t into 1 minus s a mu okay, and into a lambda u minus a mu u. So, if you differentiate d by d s of this expression, this is what you will get because remember d by d s of e power t a lambda u is nothing but a lambda times e power t a lambda u. Okay. So, that is the uh, we know okay. so d t d s sorry because d by d s of e power s a t s a sorry d by d t of e power t a u is nothing but a e power t a u which is e power t a a u for, for the exponential operator. So, you have this. So, now that is less than or equal to t times. Now, e power t s a lambda is norm is 1. This also has norm 1. So, you will just get norm a lambda u minus a mu u. So, t times norm of a lambda u minus a mu u integral 0 to 1 d s is just 1. Okay. So, this is the first estimate. So, step 2. So, now you let u belong to d of a. Then you have norm of e power t a lambda u minus e power t a mu u by the first step is nothing but less than or equal to t times norm of a lambda u minus a mu u. I am using the triangle inequality a lambda u minus a u plus t times norm of a mu u minus a u. Now, this can be made as lambda mu go to infinity by the lemma because a for the u is in d of a, a lambda u goes to a u and therefore a mu u also goes to a u. That is why it is called the Yoshida approximation. So, this goes to 0. Okay. And further because there is this t in the front, this convergence is uh, uniform over bounded t intervals. So, if t belongs to a bounded interval, then of course, you can choose lambda mu uh, sufficiently large independent of t 
and therefore that will give you the uniform convergence. Therefore, this means that e power t a lambda u uniformly Cauchy for u in d of a. But d a is dense in v and norm of e power t a lambda is less than or equal to 1 and therefore this shows this is a limit when you have uniform convergence and therefore this implies e power t a lambda u is uniformly Cauchy for all u in v okay u in d a we said but because d a is dense and this is uniformly bounded therefore it is also uniformly Cauchy in for all u so please you can check that so then we define st of u so this is the definition of st of u is limit of lambda tending to infinity e power t of a lambda u u in d u in uh, b. So, we have a candidate for the semi group. So, we have to check now several things. We have to check that S t is in fact a contraction semi group and that its domain is in fact uh, infinitesimal generator is in fact a. So, let us do that. So, step 3. Okay. So, clearly for t greater than or equal to 0, S t is linear and because it is the limit of a linear operator point wise and norm of t a lambda is less than or equal to 1 and so therefore norm of S t is also equal to 1. Since norm of t a lambda is less than or equal to 1. So, we and further S of 0 is identity. So, these are obvious properties from the definition here. Okay, so, now we want to check the semi group property. So, let us take u in v okay, and e power t a lambda e power s a lambda u minus s t s of small s u. So, let us estimate this. So, that is equal to e power t a lambda s t e power s a lambda minus s of s u plus e power t a lambda s s of u which I have to subtract minus S T S U. S T S S of U. Okay. So, you have that norm of e power T A lambda e power S A lambda U minus S T S S of U. This is less than or equal to norm of e power norm of t a lambda is 1. So, norm of e power s a lambda minus s s of u plus norm of e power t a lambda minus s t of s s of u. And then this e per t a lambda u, okay. Okay, e per s a lambda u. Now this goes to zero by definition, and this also goes to zero by definition. S s of u is some vector, and therefore this also goes to zero of the definition. Therefore, s of t plus s uh, u is the limit of lambda tending to infinity e power t plus s a lambda u which is equal to limit lambda tending to infinity e power t a lambda e power s a lambda u which is equal to uh, s t s s 
of you. And therefore, this shows S of t plus S equals S t. Yes, yes. So that shows the semi-group property. Finally, the C0 property we have to show. And now, the convergence of e power t a lambda u to S t of u is uniform on bounded intervals. And this implies that limit that h tending to 0 s h of u is nothing but s 0 of u. Okay, so this shows, so this implies that s t t greater than equal to 0 is a contraction semi group. So, step 4. So, let B be the infinitesimal generator of ST. So, to show B equal to A. So, that means we have to show that the domains coincide and on the domains the operators also coincide. Okay, so now let u belong to d of a. So, s t of u minus u is nothing but limit as lambda tends to infinity e power t a lambda u minus u. But what is e power t a lambda u minus u? This is equal to integral 0 to uh, t e power tau a lambda a lambda u d tau okay because this is nothing but the derivative of e power tau a lambda so i am eva evaluating the derivative derivative is nothing that we have already seen the d by dt of we have that here so i am just quoting that so i am writing it like this now that is equal to integral 0 to t of e power tau a lambda into a lambda u minus a u d tau plus integral 0 to t e power tau a lambda a u d tau. So, as lambda goes to infinity, the first term this norm is less than or equal to 1 and uh, this norm is less than or equal to 1 a lambda u goes to a u because u is in d of a and therefore this goes to 0 ok a lambda u goes to a u and which is a norm of tau a lambda is less than or equal to 1. So, the first term goes to 0. The limit of the second term is what it is e power tau a lambda as lambda goes to infinity a u uniform on bounded intervals. Therefore, this uh, in integration of, of a uniformly convergent sequence goes to the integral of the limit. So, this will converge to integral 0 to t of s tau of a u. So, if u is belongs to d a, you have s t of u minus u by t is equal to limit of e power t a lambda u minus uh, u by t which is equal to limit uh, 1 by t integral 0 to t s tau a u d tau and we know this goes as t decreases to 0 now to uh, to to the value at 0. So, 0 times this just goes to a u. Therefore, if u belongs to d of a, this implies that u belongs to d of b and b u equals a u. Therefore, d a is contained in d b and b restricted to d of a 
is the same as v. Okay. So, we have now to show, so to show d a equal to d v. So, let u belong to d of b. Now, i minus a is invertible. implies there exists v in the domain of a so set i minus a v equal to b uh, sorry i minus b u ok. So, this is some vector any vector you can invert it. So, I am going to uh, say since it is invertible and therefore, I have this ok that is it may v equals r r 1 of this this quantity that is all that is all I am saying ok. But then a v equal to b v since v belongs to d of a and therefore, i minus b of v minus u equal to 0, but i minus b is invertible and uh, v and u belong to v belongs to d a therefore, it is in d b and this is in d b and therefore, this implies that v equal to u ok and therefore, this implies u belongs to d of a. So, this implies that d a equals d b and b equals c ok. So, the infinitesimal generator therefore, infinitesimal generator of S t is indeed A and that completely proves the theorem. So, now we combine all the theorems which we have proved. So, we have the following statement. So, this theorem is the Hill you see that theorem an unbounded operator a on a real Banach space v is the infinitesimal generator of a contraction semi group if and only if A is closed and densely defined for every lambda greater than the 0 uh, lambda i minus A inverse exists and so this is 1, this is 2 and 3 norm of lambda i minus a inverse is less than or equal to 1 over lambda. So, this are the necessary and sufficient conditions for an unbounded operator to be the infinitesimal generator of a semi contraction semi group. What is the importance of this theorem? So, we wanted to solve du t by dt equals a u ok and u equals u naught. So, we wanted to solve this differential equation. Now, we want to, so A is an unbounded operator. So, it is closed and densely defined and the important thing to verify is the uh, condition uh, 2 and 3 and therefore, this lead is, so re, this problem reduces to the study of existence, uniqueness and a priori estimates of solutions of the form of uh, solutions of 
equations of the form you have that lambda u minus a u equal to v belonging to v arbitrary okay so this so this is not a evolution problem this is the kind of problem you will see in fact is the kind of problem we have been looking at the previous in the previous chapter the elliptic equations type of problems okay so these are the stationary problems and solutions of this and proper estimation will give you the see if you can solve this problem or not okay so up to now we worked in a real banach space so remark if v is a complex banach space and a is the infinitesimal generator of a contraction semi group then for lambda in c with real lambda positive you will have that r lambda of u equals integral e power minus lambda tau s tau of u d tau exists and r lambda equals lambda i minus a inverse and norm of r lambda is less than equal to 1 over real part of lambda ok. So, that will be the thing and this will also be a sufficient condition ok. So, this is a necessary condition. Now, uh, we cannot extend this results to cover real lambda less than or equal to 0 even uh, ok. So, let us say take the following example. So, let us v equals bounded uniformly continuous functions on 0 infinity ok and s t of f of s complex valued functions you can take s t of f s equals f of s plus t the translation semi group which we have already seen ok. So, t greater equal to 0 s greater than 0 ok. So, then s t is a contraction semi group ok and d of a will be equal to set of all f in v such that f dash belongs to v. So, this exactly as we did before there is no difference we have already seen this in the real case you can do it for the complex case also. So, and a f equals f dash ok. So, now if real lambda is less than or equal to 0. Now, if you look at the equation lambda phi minus a phi this is lambda phi minus phi dash equal to 0 has the non trivial solution namely e power lambda s and this equal to phi f s and phi belongs in fact to d a ok because its derivative is just lambda times e power lambda s and that is also a bounded uniformly continuous function. Therefore, implies that lambda i minus a not invertible if real lambda is less than or equal to 0. So, you cannot expect anything better than that ok. So, now assume so, we looked at contraction semi groups. Now, if s t greater equal to 0 is such that norm s t is less than equal to we have m omega t let us say m equals 1. So, m equals 1 ok e power omega t omega greater equal to 0 ok. So, then you look at s 1 of t equals e power minus omega t s of t this is a contraction semi group and it is infinite infinitesimal generator
of S1 you can check is nothing but A minus omega times I. Okay. And therefore, you can deduce from the Heliocida theorem the following theorem. So, theorem V real Banach A dA contained in V to V uh, is the infinitesimal generator of a semi group satisfying norm S t less than equal to e power omega t if and only if a is closed densely defined and for every lambda bigger than omega a lambda i minus a inverse exists and norm lambda i minus a inverse is less than equal to lambda minus omega inverse. So, you have to just translate the origin by omega and you get this theorem. Okay. Now, what about general theorem? So, characterization of the infinitesimal semi group for the general case m e power omega t. So, I will not tell you, uh, so m greater equal to 1 and omega greater equal to 0. Okay. So, then we have the following theorem V Banach real of course, A from D A contained in V to V is the infinitesimal generator of a C0 semi group satisfying star if and only if A is closed densely defined and for every lambda bigger than omega lambda i minus a inverse exists and now the condition is a little more stringent now lambda i minus a in minus n is less than equal to m lambda minus omega power minus n for every n in n. n is a positive integer. Okay. So, this is the general Heliocida theorem uh, for uh, uh, an arbitrary C0 semi group. Okay. So, uh, we will uh, continue further. So, this is the complete uh, completion of the proof of the Heliocida theorem. So, we have done the whole thing in detail for contraction semigroups and we have said how we can modify it for the general case. So, if you want to see details, see the book by Passy.